Hey folks, I'm out here today with my girls in the female hop yard, our female plants, and we're working on our retractable trellis. Yes, folks, retractable. You want a game changer? You check out this vlog today, vlog number 12. Thanks for being here wherever you are. Welcome, Max Raphael from Hops World. And we are going to concentrate on our female outdoor hop yard this week and show you how it works. A quick an overview and how you can make your own retractable trellis and never climb a ladder again. It's a game changer, folks. But first, we're going to check in with the hops babies. Let's go down in the dungeon and see how they're doing. Here in G2, our grow room two, with our hops babies. And if you watched last week, we actually had the hops babies about two or three feet long. They were all tangled together, getting out of hand. So I went through and I chopped them. We topped all the babies. That was the idea. We want to get them stems a lot stronger and not long, spindly plants. So they're going on about three weeks and check it out. As you can see, no more hops babies sticking out the tops of the cups. Here's our Blurple LED 600 watt grow lights. We have three of them. And something I wanted to check now that we're about three weeks is what the root growth looks like on these plants. So I took one of these, okay, and I flipped it over, popped it out of the cup. Check it out. Now when your plant comes out totally intact, even holding the perlite, you know you got nice roots all the way out to the side of the cup. These babies are ready to transplant. Unfortunately, we still have about a month to go. <laughs> so we're gonna have to feed them and add, let them grow up and add some more soil in the cups. I did intentionally plant these low in the cups so we could add soil later once they grow up. And as soon as these grow up, we're gonna add some soil and we're gonna have to give them some fertilizers. But they are kicking. They're looking good. They're chopped, but they will actually now, on the little tips, grow two sprouts and grow again. And them stems should get stronger and a nicer root base for when we plant them outside. So, Grow Room 1, kicking along. Let's check out Grow Room 2. Okay, well, G2, a lot brighter as we have white full spectrum halides. We have a 1000 watt and a 2000 watt in here. And a few days ago, we cut the lights back to 10 hours a day. Oh my gosh, I love this sunbeam. So beautiful colors compared to the Pacific gem back there. Damn. And then she really kicked butt. So we have six plants in here. Our smooth cone, we never trained. I wanted to see what it looked like. Also our Tahoma, which really didn't do so good. Didn't adapt well here to the lights. It's funny, our Lupaloides, although the flowers, the leaves look really ugly, they, there's some definitely nutrition problems we had, apparently with the soil, but the plant, Kicked. But when I'm done with this, I'm going to take that plant apart and measure how long it is. I'll bet it's close to 20 feet long. Here's our Polaris. Look how it's getting crazy at the top. It should start with these leaves getting bigger. It almost looks like we might have some flowers starting. It's only been about three or four days, but probably by the end of next week, these should start flowering. We should have some cones soon and we will germinate these 
with our pollen from the wild French male. We still have some little babies on the ground. We're we'll going to have to move into the other room to cut the hours back. We're going to do that later today. We might chop them too. They're getting out of hand. So grow room one, grow room two. Checking. Looking good. Let's go see what's happening over at Hops World. Well, definitely can't do a vlog without checking on the Triumph Twins. Water 72.4 degrees. That's fine. I like definitely anything higher than that. I get a little worried. You can see the plants look the same on the bottom. It's interesting they never got really woody, but going up, they definitely are getting even bushier. Unfortunately, I think they're pretty much in re-veg state. <laughs> I quit putting up the cover. I don't know if you've been following along. I'm gonna go up the ladder here and show you. They are like a jungle up here, man. They just keep getting bushier and bushier, more leaves and more leaves. And the cones it formed still are forming, but uh, see that one? Pretty cool looking. I'm trying to see if I could see inside one with the light behind it. Dying to find out if there's any seeds. Man, it looks so cool though. I'm actually definitely going to chop this thing shortly and start over. I'm anxious too because I have a great idea how to do this and I'm only going to have one plant in the aeroponic. Uh, I can't keep up with the water. It's just too much and um, I can't believe I didn't think of it sooner. I'm mad at myself. What I did this week, I just filled the whole thing with water. Even though it wasn't aeroponic, it turned into a hydroponic because the roots are just way full in the bottom. Where's some cones that are in the light? Let's see if I can see that bad boy. But uh, anyway, I filled the reservoir full of water. So the volume of water just doubled and it's still pumping. I don't think the little bit of spray was making much difference. It was just circulating the water and aerating it, which is the main thing. And I even have an air stone in there anyway. But there they are, folks, the Triumph Twins. I'll back off again and show you the whole plant from afar, hopefully, with our 600 watt Mars Hydro uh, LED full spectrum. The ceiling's 10 and a half foot, so the plants are 10 foot from the ground, and the vase is a foot tall, so they're like nine foot, and then they got four or five foot more. I could have done better getting them the flower, the light. Like I said, I, if you didn't follow along, I had a blue tarp covering this. And because the ambient light coming in here in the hops were out through the windows during the day, and I've been working late at night out here and leaving the fluorescent lights on. So the plants started flowering, I quit on them, then they, uh, I started again, then I just uh, decided to pollinate them, try to get what I can off these cones. I don't want to pick a cone to check for seeds because there's only not too many cones. But that's really all I wanted was to get some seeds from my French male, wild male pollen. So there's the Triumph Twins and Zeus. I really want to get Zeus out there in the male yard. I didn't show you that this week because nothing changed much. The plants sprouted a little but we'll definitely show you that next week and i want to get this one triumph and the little baby triumph i have do something with them maybe plant them in a pot maybe make a hops wall we'll see i want to show you something real quick before we go out there into the female yard and check on the trellis my hops bar <laughs> is done i made this thing out of some uh, used office furniture a piece of a desk the whole top and then uh, uh, backside has drawers 
they were two cabinets that I mounted. It rolls, it pushes, and it, with diamond plate and everything, it looks really cool. Aluminum corners, black linoleum, I got 110 bucks into it. The best part. But I'm wondering what to do with the wall behind here, because this is going to be our bar, our sit down area to talk, chat. Any ideas, let me know. Whether to put a neon, whether to put some, a big mural, I thought it would be really cool. A wrap, maybe, or a bunch of big pictures. Some beer signs, I don't know. Well, let's get outside, nothing here. Peace out. Okay, folks, well, we're back out here in the female hop yard, and we made some changes. We actually dug up some plants, and planted a plant we're going to plant some more but before i get going with that like i said i want to explain our trellis that we made this will be our like fourth or fifth year um one, two, three. at least fourth but uh i kind of designed this as one post with a t and i was going to then i made it into like, kind of like a field goal uh, soccer field goal kind of thing and then th when I ended up figuring out what size pipe that they sell and the lengths I kind of just took advantage of them and used the full length of pipe which came to 21 feet so the trellis is 16 feet tall and 5 feet in the ground there is concrete in the holes or 8 inch diameter um, I left the concrete down a little, so I just fill it with dirt. So it's super sturdy. The anchors, uh, anchor wires that you can't see here, there are some on the other end. They go down, and what I did was made a hole about three feet deep, and I put a chain and left it sitting like a snake in the bottom of the hole and left the chain coming out about a foot, foot and a half, and then filled it with concrete. That way I could hook anywhere along the chain. Uh, it gave me a lot of extra lead way. I was worried in the lengths, I don't know. But uh, I just thought it was a good way to solidly anchor and pretty cheap without buying uh, anchors just with some cement and some chain that I actually had. So uh, you can see the pipe here, it's three inch water pipe. And it was threaded on the end. So I used uh, threaded tees and I built each end of this on the ground. You can see down the other end, uh, hopefully there's four posts. I'll show you up close. With bars going all the way across. I ended up cutting the 21 foot lengths in half, just about to fit in between. And then I actually took and had the pipes threaded. Uh, it was, I think, six altogether pieces that I had to have threaded. And then I left, uh, I think, a three and a half foot piece sticking out each end so I could have a V trellis. So the hop yard itself is uh, kind of like a raised bed uh, vegetable garden, was the basic idea. It started with uh, just the one bed all the way on this side, then it became three, and then uh, I think two years ago. I added this one and I don't know this poor old tree is almost dead it might go and maybe add a little more <laughs> we're way out of room but regardless um, what it is is uh, the pipe goes up 16 feet and tees off right here what I put in was an eye bolt that comes through and it has these are the actual cables that go up and there's a little eye bolt up top and they run across the top of the trellis where the strings attach to and they come all the way down to here instead of hooking up top and the reason i did this is so that i put a little turnbuckle i can oh that side's tight all right this side's loose i can unhook this with the turnbuckle and i tie a string on here and then I could pull the wire all the way down on this end, the cable. If I had this just hooked at the top, there would be no way that I could tie strings. 
when I lower the trellis, when I lower the cables. So I tie a little string on here and I let this go up and I pull the cable down when I have to tie strings. I'm not tying strings today. The plants are only four or five inches tall and we're gonna actually uh, chop them probably. But regardless, even if I don't, it's a few weeks at least out. But I'm gonna clean, basically this is the inspection See if there's anything wrong. Clean all the old strings off the trellis. Some of these strings I just checked. There's four of them here that are really good. I couldn't break it with my hand, so there's no, they weren't cut last year. I'm just gonna leave them. But the rest of the strings I'm gonna have to put. But there's some end pieces. I don't know if you can see them from here, but we'll show you that are still left from last year, hanging down in the middle. I like to clean them up. If you look at a hop yard out there in Yakima Valley, there's tons of strings you can almost figure out how many years the trellis is old because there's all these knots with little four or five inch strings in a row but um, the, on this end this is how we do it a simple turnbuckle and eye bolt coming through each side so the cable goes up so it v's out it's actually six feet in between the cables at the top and two years ago i had 40 females and 10 males here uh, they were all different females full-grown uh, commercial varieties and one or two of my own but um, last year two years ago I took all them out and started all over brand new last year every plant in here is coming second year um, some were actually cuttings from the USDA every one or uh, except for the Neo Mexicano which is wild the USDA doesn't have that um, but, uh, and then my own plants that we made from seed. So we'll show you the other side of the hop yard, which is the brains of the uh, trellis. And this coming week, hopefully, if not by definitely by two weeks, I'm gonna do a tip on actually how to build this trellis exactly. I already have the designs. Before I built this, I made a little design and I'll post it quickly here, but I'll explain it uh, in detail along with part of this video and uh, in detail of every part of the trellis. So within a week or two, we'll definitely have a tip up about how to build a retractable trellis. Both a V is similar to this. You can actually adapt it for what you uh, want, to, want to use, but I'll make a simple one out of a wood post, just like typical uh, wood post trellis, but retractable. Um, that you can raise and lower and you never have to go up a ladder again that was a game changer for me folks oh I love it I do go up the ladder pretty often when the plants are budding cones just to take some cool pictures as opposed to lowering the plants but uh, it's worth it so, but there's no more standing on a ladder and moving the ladder or trying to get some kind of a mechanical thing in here to walk around with a up high I'm getting too old for that, too big for that. But speaking of that, it is beautiful out. I am sweating. I just dug up three plants and it's time for, get rid of this, COVID-20. <laughs> I'm on the COVID diet this winter. Netflix, food, pray for spring. Some beers too. So let's show you the other end of the trellis, okay? So here is the end top pipe of the trellis which has the wheel and you can see the cable which is slack on this side because I lowered it if we come down so the cable is slack on the crank and it comes all the way down to here and this was the other hook that I put in. It is kind of good because I know how far to tighten this up when I'm looking up. I know it goes right about the right to there and it's tight. And so then the cable looking across is on the ground. So if I disconnect the other end there and let that fall, the cable totally on the ground laying next to the plants. And I know just right where to put each string, right in front of each plant. I tie them on. I crank the cable back up and then I tie the strings on the bottom. And then when harvest time, I lower the cable and cut them. 
It's great. So like I said, check out our tip coming up this week or next week. So this whole unit I built, by the way, on the ground, it was laying here into the middle. I screwed it all together. I had some of the pipes threaded up at the top at one end. I needed to. And I have a bobcat and I used a six by six, 12 foot long in between the two in the middle. I think it was 14 feet long. With a bucket, my bobcat and tilted it up into, and it dropped into the holes. Oh, it was a whole thing. I wish I had a video of that. It was, I didn't know if it was gonna work. It was a little hairy. It was all by myself. <laughs> anyway, it's working great. And I'll definitely have a tip, show you detail by detail how to do this and how to make a nice simple trellis just like it. So now let's take a tour and look at our girls while we're here. What the hell? One thing I did this week is I re-tagged a lot of the plants, if you look, every one actually, with new sticks. I got some extra jumbo sticks from Home Depot. My neat trick on how to get free paint sticks, go to Home Depot. And they have the big ones. I like the big ones. So anyway, we actually did a renumbering system, believe it or not, of all of our own varieties from the ones that we had I think we had like 18 first ones were three years ago but 17 of them 16 of them are from last year anyway uh, I wanted to have a system where I could tell just by looking at the number when I started the seed first year I planted it um, what cross it came from and then what seed from that cross so as opposed to just having a number 122, that is Comet versus Rocky. How do I know Comet versus Rocky 122? Uh, without going into the computer, looking it up, and this way, right in the numbering system, I'll be able to tell if two plants were made from the same actually crossing their sisters. Cool, huh? What year, everything. Anyway. Show you some of the plants. Let's go down the row here. This is HB 2000-04. This is an open pollination, open pollination that we actually planted this thing, transplanted it late, so we covered it with a lot of dirt. It's just popping up. A lot of these down here, we did that too. We took them from the back of the hop yard. A lot of the open pollination, open pollinations, because that's where we had uh, over a hundred of them. And we ended up with 14. We had 200, I think. Started with 400, but this thing, I don't even see it popping up over there. Not looking pretty. Definitely some might not make it. This one's nothing. Check out Centennial. Wow, if you looked at the vlog from last week to this week. So one thing I didn't do yet is mulch or add anything yet here. Because what happened? I got my soil test back. And it says I'm high in organic matter. But I, I don't care. I have to put some. It, it, it's something about me every year. I don't like the soil. It looks too pale. <laughs> I like a nice dark looking soil. But if you actually reach your hand in, it, it's nice and crumbly. Just like I love it. I mean the soil and by the way the pH 7.0 I'll show you quickly the test result here uh, perfect pH I'd like 6.5 but heck they said it was perfect for hops and I sent the test to one of the biggest labs in the country that does a lot of the far northwest tests going down the row Another Triumph versus Rocky. Hard to tell when they're young. The difference in color from when they're only an inch or two tall, they're really purple. Another Triumph versus Rocky. These are three sisters. Or, yeah, they're definitely sisters. These are all females. 
the mighty nugget. Here's another open pollination. It's a little ahead of the rest. Now Chinook, last year Chinook, I planted really late. Barely went anywhere, but damn. She's ready to go. Nothing there. I am so thrilled with this Brewer's Gold. I wish I showed you when I planted it right before winter. Oh, I was scared to plant it. I was scared to try to keep it over to winter. And here I actually transplanted. There was nothing in here. Our pocket talisman. That's a dwarf hop that we had over next to the shed and it was in the shade half the day and it grew, but I think it's full of downy mildew. I'm not sure. Zeus, we'll probably find out. Now Zeus looks pretty good, nice and green. I'm surprised, knock on wood, I probably shouldn't even say it. I haven't seen any downy mildew shoots yet. It's rained the last couple days. Ay ay. Why'd I say that? Comet versus Rocky. HB200220. And here, sad day. Oh, this is our 2000 double X01. I call these experimental because the seeds somebody gave me. But Magnum, gone. It's a sad day. You served your purpose. Ma'am, sorry to do it. You notice, there she is going on the fire. She had some two foot long roots. Now they're experimental. It, last year these barely did anything. I, I mean, they barely, were trying to adapt, I guess. They were horrible. I, I kept them because they're supposed to be great. <laughs> sure. So this one actually looks pretty cool. And you can see it definitely has a Neo-Mexicano looking leaf. Maybe it's just new. This one's kicking. I did get a couple seeds. I think one seed cross with the Superboy. It popped this year. I think I only had like one or two cones from all the experimentals. I don't know why I bothered keeping them. Maybe they're going to adapt. Another open pollination. Here's another experimental. It's pretty. That looks like kind of Neo-Mexicanish. Also, this, co this one here is like almost dark purple. I mean, it's already out and it's, wow, difference in color. If you don't know them, opopollination, opopollination were from two years ago when I had 40 females and 10 males. And I let the plants lay on the vine after I picked some seeds and they, all the seeds fell on the ground and they just popped up in the yard here. So I don't know what they are. Well, another death in the hop yard. Thank you very much, Southern Cross, even though I didn't get a damn seed from your ass. You did me wrong. I love Southern Cross and it killed in Brazil, but it was using up this whole bed. But thanks for trying. And this thing, oh my gosh, Alfa Roma here? Over in our mail yard, if you saw when I pulled that one out, this damn thing for first year. This is just starting the second year. Look at them sprouts. Damn, I should grab them and eat them bad boys fresh. Throw them on tonight's salad. Look at the hole I had to make. I didn't cover it up yet, just to show you. One thing when I start rhizomes and plants in pots and then I plant them, I like that it ends up, that what was in the pot ends up here. You can see the perlite. Definitely is highly mulched. According to my lab test, it's highly mulched, but not enough. I'm putting more mulch. I don't care. Here's three Comet versus Rockies. These are more sisters. The cross that I made, and that'll be two years ago, right? And our pubescent, which uh, I'm not sure. I'm scared. I don't want to lose her. Although I got some good seeds crossed with Superboy. So, 
Well, there it is, folks. Three less plants, but we made space for a lot of plants because I'm going to divide this, these big beds, for some of the ones that are in the grow room right now down the dungeon that we saw earlier. But I wanted to show you something else. These buckets. I had plants in here back two years ago. Neo-Mexicanos. Uh, I got way back when I got rocky. And when we let all the plants seed and everything, these just grew over with weeds last year. But look what's happening this year. It's only got about five inches of dirt. I don't know, it looks like three separate plants here. So they're really adapting considering I never gave them water all year last year. I think maybe the buckets, you can see they're kind of in the shade right now because the sun's lower where the rest of the plants are in the sun all day. I think that might help. I can see the soil is really pretty moist. And then over here also, I actually cleaned some of the weeds out of here when I cleaned the yard. It was full of weeds and I went to just clean these out, actually. I should have took a video or a picture first, but there's another one. I don't know if I should pull them out and transplant them, let them grow. I don't think there's enough dirt to really see what they can really do. Well, we'll see if there's any room. That might make the difference. Well, I think that covers it of our retractable hops trellis. Thanks for being here, guys. I really appreciate it. I worked up a sweat today, not with you guys, just before the sun is beating down. I'm probably getting a little, I definitely turned into a lobster, <laughs> but I love the sun. I love the spring. I can hear the birds. I don't know if you can. And this time of year for me, uh, I could just be out here forever. I just want to show you one more thing the last thing I'm going to show you before I leave, but please subscribe to the channel if you want to watch more vlogs. Next week I'm going to talk about the irrigation system and we're going to start at the end and work our way to all the valves and the angles and underground. Well, we're not going to go underground, but we're going to show you where it goes. Over to the splitter, over to the timer, over to the where the feed is for our water system. And the same you can make for your little hop yard. So thanks again. Subscribe to our channel. Before I go, I want to show you what I had to do. I wish she was here. She. But it's Vivi's fault. Victoria, our hops helper. And next week I'll explain why. But I made this little hop shard special for Superboy. Check it out. Well, check it out. Da, 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 super boy our male that we used last year to pollinate a lot of our plants we literally have hundreds of this boy's babies down there you've seen them today in g2 in the dungeon this thing goes up this cable where we have the anchor and gets all the way up to the top. It's 16 feet, but it's like 18 and a half feet at an angle. Last year was the first year, but man, I can't wait. See this year, there's about 10 sprouts. This thing gets all the way up there. Cheers to life, friends.